Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of my live tea tasting. I've got a really great blend for you guys today, so I am so thrilled, so excited to, to get things going. Um, this was a bit of a, um, of a last minute decision. I didn't know which, which uh, tea I was going to do, but I, well, I didn't really stumble upon one, but I think I chose a really great one. Uh, hey, Snea, welcome. Tonight I'm doing a, what is this, uh, what is it called, a Manjushri, Manjushri Royal Assam Tea. And let me tell you, I, I just opened this pack a few minutes ago, and I was not disappointed but, uh, at the product. Like From the very moment that I smelled this thing, it really impressed me. And we'll, 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 we'll get to what it looks like in just a moment, but... It just, it really kind of shocked me at the quality of the of tea it was. Uh, this was actually a gift from my, I guess, uncle and aunt-in-laws, if you can say that. <laughs> if that's a thing. Um, <clears> that was, uh, hey Joe, welcome. Oh, you love a good Assam? Oh yeah. This one is definitely a good Assam and I, will, I would seriously recommend you stick around for a bit. Because you're going to be very impressed. Um, now, when I first opened this thing, the scent was super earthy, super rich. Um, it was almost, it had notes of peach and coffee. And it was like, it was really nice and strong. Um, and it just really affected me. Yeah, you know what, let's see what it smells like after it's steeped, you see? Ooh, ooh, that is nice. It's got a really nice aroma. It's rich, it's earthy, it's dark. And if you take a look, it's just, whoop, I'm trying not to, there we go. <laughs> I'm trying not to spill the leakage into my cup because that can really mess things up. But as you can see, it's looking, as you guys know, Assam is a CTC kind of tea, which is stands for Cut, Tear, Curl, where it's processed. The leaves are shortened, um, shredded, and they, they're very, very tiny, like little balls. Now, if you take a look at the blend itself, look at that. How rich, how dark. You can't see anything. Look, look at that. My hand disappears behind this thing. And you know what? I was looking at this thing, um, even in the light, I couldn't see through it. That's how, that's how, uh, how, how black this tea is. Uh, <laughs> there's some puer level dark there. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, you, you can't see through it. And if you remember, uh, what was that, in, back in uh, multimedia, in, in the television production, remember Blacker Than Black? That is this. All I see when I put, when I put it through the, uh, the light is little shades of red on either side. Otherwise, it's black. You don't see a thing. And this is like straight up, this is like super rich. Oh my god, that, and, and the aroma is really fresh. It's really, it's it's very roasty. It's very roasty with, with very, like, it does not smell, um, it doesn't smell, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> uh, astringent. It doesn't smell astringent at all. Uh, this is a typical Assam, well, I wouldn't say typical, I'd say it's ideal. It's what Assam should be. Uh, a lot of uh, typical uh, Assams, uh, they tend to, they tend to go out cheap because it's CTC, it's easy to, to fake um, a quality. But this one is, is straight up like, it's, it's, it's really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and take my first, after, after five minutes of bragging about how it looks and smells, I'm going to go into the taste now.
So let's go for our first slurp of the day. Ooh, that is smooth. It's got a nice mellow feel to it. Um, it's not overly strong. You know how some uh, some Assams can be super strong, super smoky. Um, this one is nice and smooth. It's got a. Uh, uh, it, it doesn't taste like I thought it would. Like I'm not getting the notes of peach yet. Uh, it might be just be because it's it's still too hot. Um, but when I smelled it, it was nice and aromatic. Very rich, very, um, very rich, very earthy. It was really nice. And this is not astringent at all. I'm really, really digging this. The, there's a slight, um, there's a slight bitterness, a little bit of a bite at the end. It's not like... How do I put this? Um, it's not... It, it's not disturbing at all. Nicole, welcome! It's not disturbing at all. It's really smooth, very drinkable. Um, but it's got that same kind of... It's got that same kind of bitterness that coffee has in the smell. It's got that on the taste. And it's very light on the muscatel. Like the muscatel is usually in black teas you get that overwhelming black tea taste. Um, that's what's usually con uh, considered muscatel. Uh, admit it, you made an astringent. No, I didn't actually. The, uh, like j naturally, Assam tea is supposed to be slightly astringent, um, because of its because of its uh, strength behind it. It gets a little bit bitter. This is strong uh, and smoky, but doesn't have that that astringent bite that makes you go ah! at the end. Now let me tell you, when I first poured the water on here, within Within seconds of it, there was a nice red tone, and I said, I said to myself, okay, this is a beautiful start. It's probably going to maintain that color the way a Darjeeling would, or the way a Ceylon would, where it's brownish, uh, copper, or bronze, or around those things. I did not expect it to get this black, and I tell you the, the, the truth, I left for a minute. Now, I steeped this for five minutes. I left for a minute, came back, and this thing had darkened beyond, like, what I would have imagined. I mean, look at it. Like, I was not expecting this kind of color out of, uh, out of the tea. Hmm. Well, this is very drinkable. Now, it has the potential um, to get, to get bitter, all Assams do, um, as it cools off. So I'm going to try not to let it get to that point today, but from what I can tell, it's really, really nice, really smooth. Um, I'm hoping <laughs> at the end of it, uh, it maintains the flavor, uh, but we'll see. You know, I, I mean, I, I haven't finished a cup online uh, in a while, so no, we'll, we'll we'll see how far it goes. Hmm. And now that it's cooled off slightly, I'm starting to get that classic um, rock fruit flavor. It's got like a little bit of apple in it. Um, it's going a little bit sweeter than it was when it was like super hot um, but it's 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 maintaining that uh, that quality you know it's not really hitting me in the back of the throat the way some Assams do uh, but this is like it's 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 amazing like I'm really digging this tea
This is this is the way a classic black tea should be. You know, like very little astringency. Um, you can make this. I'm kind of like. I'm kind of thinking about making this into a nice milk tea or a chai, adding all those special ingredients in there. This will really do well uh, as you boil it and really like test uh, what it's what it's made out of. Mmm. Oh, that is really really nice. All right, I'm going to show you guys what it looks like because. I hope I don't like drop too much of it, but check out that tea. Like all of that used to be, you know, those really big long leaves that I usually have. This is like just barely a powder, you know. I mean, it's it's super fine, super small, and it's like just little little tiny pellets. But when you pull it out, it's gonna have some processing to it. Like the 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 texture itself changes very very much you see it clumping more than usual because of the uh, because of the water and it becomes really really soft in comparison to the 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 hard almost rock like pellets that it becomes now this as if you've seen the pictures from uh, my trip to the tea farm these were done by hand, uh, not by hand, by by machine. So what they do is they lay, uh, they 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 dry the leaves, and then they put it into a machine that grinds it in a circle and just breaks it down a whole lot. This is part of the oxidation process, where it breaks the teas, uh, the tea leaves, and almost it basically pulverizes the tea into. Uh, an almost powder and you get you get this like it's just straight up I don't know you, like it, the camera's not even picking it up like I'm dropping it little by little you can't see it because it's tiny what I like about this I hope I can show you guys from here is that there's little tiny golden tips it's not really showing up on the camera Maybe I can get lucky and pull one out because I see them. But the problem is, like, my fingers are too big. It's very fine. I can't really pull one out very easily. Yeah, this is this is not going <laughs> well. Ah. Oh, it looks like I got a little bit of a diamond in the rough. <laughs> this one didn't quite process the way that it should have. Uh, the tea is too fine to pick apart. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, the, it's like the little golden, the little golden tips look kind of like this. Um, they're smaller, so it was hard for me to get to. Um, but you know, I'm going to process this a little bit, a little bit by myself. Yeah, it's not going to make a difference. <laughs> Nobody's going to taste the difference to me. Mm. Oh wow, yeah, this tea, this tea is driving me wild. I really, really enjoy this. Um, it's still very smoky and very earthy in in, uh, in the front end. Um, I can taste it starting to get a little bit astringent. Uh, so I'm going to do my best to drink as much of it as I can uh, on the stream before it gets too bitter. Because that's one thing, like, I, I, I'm I not sensitive to uh, astringency, but I also don't enjoy it, really. Uh, I, can, I can tolerate a good amount of it, but um, sometimes too much astringency ruins it for me. <coughs> Excuse me. I still got that cough. Even though it's getting better. <laughs> and I love the way that, like, the, like this very little texture 
to this. Hey, Nicole, welcome. There's, oh, I, I promise I'm not going to die. Not yet, anyway. Um, but it, it's, it's, there's very little texture on there. It's very drinkable. Um, very liquidy as opposed to, uh, as, as opposed to like having a heavy mouthfeel. There's no graininess. There's no texture whatsoever. It all just goes straight down. Um, but also what I find interesting is that this is a very slow burning tea. It just sits in your mouth, uh, even as I speak, um, and it, 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 it dries out slightly <clears throat> and it fades, but it's still very much present, uh, on my tongue. And even, you know, as I talk, like I feel it, uh, and I taste it swirling around little by little. I love like this 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 is a really nice it's a nice smokiness to it. Um it feels very very smooth. It's it's sitting very well on my palate. Um I would love to like I would love to experiment with this. You know, I mean, I mentioned before that I would love to make it into a milk tea, but also, you know, like putting honey or putting sugar or something like into it, um, maybe a little bit of milk, a little bit of cream, something like that. Like, this is a very versatile kind of flavor. Um, I don't think I'll do it for the stream, only because, like, I want to stay faithful to this particular blend um, and give a full report, even as it cools down little by little, uh, how it starts to taste after a while. I'm getting a good, uh, sounds like that'd be good, let us know when you do. Oh yeah, absolutely, I'm, I'm definitely trying to, um, to keep a, uh, to keep an open mind when it comes to doing different things with teas. Uh, and this one in particular, because of the quality, because, um, because I don't think that it, it would lose anything from the experimentation, that I'd be more open to using it in different things. Uh, for instance, I'd probably use it in like making rice. Uh, I've had, I've, I've made tea rice before and it came out incredible. Um... Is this like a morning or evening tea? Um, <clears throat> I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, it's definitely got that, you know, wake up, kick you in the pants kind of kind of taste to it for the morning. Um, but it's, I think that, you know, you can definitely enjoy it in the evening as well. Um, this is going to be a caffeinated tea, of course. So if you're sensitive to, into, if you're sensitive to caffeine, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, this one, because of the process that it's been through and all the agitation, all of the uh, wrecking that it goes through, it's going to be more on the higher end of caffeine. Um, but, in, in I mean, if, if you don't care about the caffeine content, go ahead and enjoy this. Uh, I, I would lean more towards a morning tea for that because... Traditionally, you, you get that strong flavor to just wake you up, you know, and that's what that's what I'm looking for in a in a breakfast kind of tea. Uh, Assam is also used in, in a huge part uh, in Scottish and Irish breakfast. Not so much English breakfast. Uh, English breakfast uses a lot of Ceylon and Darjeeling um, on the lighter side, but. Uh, Scottish breakfast especially uses a heavy amount of Assam tea to really put, uh, to really pick you up. Mm. Ooh, this is nice. I'm starting to get more of that apple kind of flavor to it. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. Ooh, I just caught... 
I just caught a whiff of something that. Hmm. I'm trying to place it. I'm getting. There's a certain streak of like almost caramel. Caramel or smoky sugar in there. Ooh, that was nice. I'm gonna do the Thomas taste. I gotta do the Thomas taste uh, to really see if I can find that. Here we go. I'm getting, yeah, like a roasted caramel kind of thing going there. Ooh, that is nice. And when I do that, it just, it sits, uh, especially on the back of my throat, there's like, the muscatel is, is strongest right now in the back of my throat. Um, and it's just really, it's really soft. Like I'm surprised this is this is uh, has not gotten astringent still. You know, there's a very slight bitterness, but it's still it's still holding on pretty well. What's muscatel? Muscatel is that classic uh, black tea flavor, the one that's hard to really um, to describe to anybody unless you've had it before. Uh, it's, it's, it's just that presence of the black tea. Uh, hey mom, welcome, I see you popped in. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's got that, that classic black tea flavor that, um, that you just come to know and love. Okay, questions, comments, anything you want to talk about, now's the time. I'm going to answer Teresa's question as I always do. What would I, what would I uh, pair this with? Now this would be a very strong flavor. Um, it's 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 going to be it's going to be hard to to pair it a little bit, um, only because like it, I can't I can't really think of any flavors that it wouldn't overpower. You know, uh, it's definitely an entree kind of tea where you'll need something that's uh, strong flavored but not necessarily smoky. Because I think that if I were to pair this with like a steak or something, um, you'd get, if the steak has been a little bit charred, <clears throat> you'd lose a certain part of the quality. Uh, was this, I would have tea after a big meal. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what works. Um, and I'm kind of thinking it, it might have the same kind of effect uh, with milk and sugar. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, it might have, I'm kind of thinking that this particular blend might have the same kind of effect of, uh, as a puar, where you drink it and it kind of like helps settle your stomach to the point where you might get hungry again. I mean, I, like, that, that kind of effect, I don't know if it's just me, because, like, I'm always hungry, uh, but I have heard, uh, I've heard quite a few people say that after they drink uh, puar after a, a heavy meal, they get hungry again. So I thought it was just me. I would say, if I'm going to do a beef, maybe a meatloaf, rather than a, rather than a steak. Because meatloaf, you can maintain that uh, that beefy kind of flavor without um, without you know charring it too much, without making it too uh, too smoky. And I think that that would do very well. Um, if I were to add the milk and sugar, that might make it more that might help it stand out a little bit. Um, but yeah, like I guess that would make things easier to pair if you're eating it after the meal. Uh, sorry, if you're drinking it after the meal rather than during. Um, as a chaser, then definitely with cream and sugar, it would go very well with steak. 
but hey, Zam, welcome. Uh, but other than that, like it's 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 really hard to place. I don't know. It's a, I, I don't. Know, I'm kind of I'm kind of stumped a little bit. And I, I, I can't even say that I would recommend this with, like, an Indian food because it's an Indian tea. Uh, because it's served very differently in India. You know, this is the kind of tea that it would be made milk tea. You know, you would drink it with, you would, you would drink it with boiled milk, um, a little bit of water, and you add a bunch of uh, the, chai, uh, the chai ingredients to it. And this would make an excellent chai uh, from scratch. But on its own, it's very strong, standalone. Mm, I would, I definitely recommend this if you like robust flavors. This is definitely gonna gonna be good for you. Mm. Oof. Okay, questions, comments, anything you want to talk about? Now's the time. It's starting to get a little bit astringent here. Now I'm starting to taste astringency, and it took a while. <laughs> Um, announcements, do I have any announcements? Um, I wanted to give an update. I have been, um, I've been slacking a little bit, I guess, because I feel like this is going to be uh, still a long time coming. But, uh, the duck race is still coming to Chicago. Uh, I'm still raising the, uh, the funds for it. Um, I'm going to start being more proactive and uh, gathering funds, and hopefully that uh, we'll, we'll reach the the goal. Uh, I believe what did I say? Twelve hundred, twelve hundred uh, ducks. So right now we're around. I want to say twelve percent, something like that. So, <clears throat> you know, we'll we'll get we'll. I'm dying to like just. <laughs> <coughs> Oh, excuse me. I am dying to like really get a good amount of ducks going. Um, and once we get that 1200, hopefully we'll go over. I want to go over because if we go over, I'll do a I'll do a giveaway. Now you guys remember what I said, um, if we reach that 1200 goal, I will do the iced tea bucket challenge where I will take a bunch of like liquid tea, pour it uh, pour it into a bucket put some ice in there, and then pour it over my head for you guys um, if we get that 1200 If we go over, I will be doing a giveaway. I'll get some swag depending on how far ahead we get for the, uh, for the, for the, for the fundraiser. I'll get a really nice product. To give away, uh, we'll we'll do it live on that uh, on that same stream. Mm. Ooh, this is so good. So anyway, um, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> I think we've pretty much covered everything. So thank you all so much for joining me tonight because this has been a really great blend. I highly recommend it. Um, I will try to post this, uh, I'll try to find a link for it. Uh, I don't know how to find it, I, I don't know if there is a website, but if there is, I'll figure it out, I'll post it in the, uh, in the comments, I mean, sorry, I'll post it in the description, and we'll take it from there. Uh, so until next time, have a great night, a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you next time. Good night, Nicole. Bye, everybody.